Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. And I've entitled this, You Never Know. You Never Know. You never know if this is going to be the last time you get to share Jesus with somebody. I'm, I'm thinking about Matt, uh, John chapter 1, verses 40 through 42. It says, One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he bought, brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. So we see that it was that Peter came to Christ because of Andrew. Andrew brought uh, Peter, his brother, to Christ. And the fact is we all have people within our sphere of influence who need Jesus. Am I right? Maybe it's our child. Maybe it's our grandchild. Maybe it's our co-worker. Maybe it's our neighbor. Whoever it is, we all know people. As a matter of fact, we're told... Um, uh, sociologists tell us that the average believer has nine, I think it is, nine uh, unchurched or people that are who claim to be saved and uh, but are not in church or uh, unsaved people. So they have nine, uh, a makeup of nine of, of those that are who who are saved and don't go to church and who are who are not saved and they're all in our sphere of influence. These are people we care about. We are concerned about, we're, we're concerned about their walk with Christ and their eternal destination. And yet the fact is that people, God brings people into our lives all the time. And as Andrew cared about his brother so much, uh, Peter, that he took Peter to see Jesus. Do we care enough about people to bring them to Jesus, to invite them to church, to invite them to uh, to receive Christ as their Savior. Now, I was a principal for 10 years, and uh, I was very fortunate in the last five years of, of being a school principal. That had a lot of leeway. My, uh, the head of schools there was a Christian, and, uh, and she knew that I had a pastoral background, and, uh, and she gave me a lot of leeway. She allowed me to minister to the kids and there's always a line which way you go with that, and um, and certainly the, uh, the the people within the uh, the the school, the students, the teachers all knew that I was a pastor. So I I used that church or that school as a way of ministering and and, and sharing Christ. And and I remember right around Christmas one year, a a father came into the uh, to, to my office and, uh, or really the, the school office there. And, and we're talking about their, their child. And, and I begin to ask about him. He's a big guy. He was, he was maybe a little, a couple years older than me at that time. And, and, um, and asked him how he's doing. And he says, well, I'm concerned. And I said, what are you concerned about? He goes, well, I have, I'm going to have an operation here. And, um, and I just don't have a good feeling about it. I'm not sure that the outcome is, is going to be too good. And it seemed like a very, um, you know, a minor surgery, as I remember it. Uh, but it, it concerned him. And, uh, you know, I asked him, I said, well, let me ask you this. Uh, where are you at with the Lord? Are you saved? Are you born again? Do you know if you were to die, um, you, would, you would go to heaven? And the guy, this ex-Marine, looked at me and says, no, I don't. I, I, I don't know. And I said, would you like to know? And um, he said, yes. And so I had to take him outside because the, out, the school office had a big window there. So I took him into a back room and I shared Jesus with him. And this, this Marine, this, this father, this, this guy who's concerned about um, his eternal welfare bowed and prayed to receive Christ, right there on school grounds. An amazing thing. I told my head of schools, and she rejoiced, and and um, and you know what? That guy had that operation, 
and he died. He died uh, because of complications regarding that surgery. I attended his funeral. And, you know, it, um, it amazed me that um, God allowed me to be there at that time. The Spirit of God was wooing him to himself. He, he understood his need. He was concerned about his spiritual destination. And I just happened to be the one. There's nothing special about me, but I just happened to be the one, like Andrew, who went to get his brother. You know what? You and I need to be open to opportunities like that, to share Christ with hurting people. My wife is very good about that, about sharing Jesus with other people and uh, the hurting. And she, has, she garners a lot of respect in, in, in the medical field where she works because of it. And uh, we can all be that way. We don't have to be outwardly, um, you know, with a blowhorn, uh, blowing people away, um, you know, telling them to repent or, or they're going to go to hell. But we just have to be available, ready to share, ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within us. I, for, I firmly believe that I'll see that man again in heaven. And, uh, and you and I need to remember that sphere of influence. You know, God may not have, may, may not have called you to go to a foreign land to share Christ. But I dare say he's called us to live Christ in the land that we live and be ready to share him and invite people uh, to church to sh um, under the influence of the gospel. Um, I think as, as many as, as he opens up opportunities for us. Amen. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying God loves you and I love you as well. And I'll talk to you soon.